welcome back. How are you doing? Today I have an interesting technique using the alpha channel and blend ranges to erase out shadows or highlights and combine the end result in various creative ways. So let's get started. Here I have a very nice misty photo which is perfect to demonstrate this technique. First, as always, let me start by duplicating the layer. I'm also going to rasterize the duplicated layer to a pixel layer. I have noticed by using this technique, Affinity Photo sometimes has issues with it. Probably it will be fixed in future versions. When using pixel layers, everything works without any issues. Next step is to apply a curves adjustment. And I'm going to change the alpha channel and make the line flat so nothing is shown. Let me also make it a child of the duplicated layer and hide the original layer. Now comes the cool part. If I open the blend options for the curves adjustment and start changing the blend range of it, you see what is happening. I can make various parts of the image transparent. This is kind of cool, so how can we use it? If I keep the shown blend range, the highlights will be transparent. Let's zoom in if this is indeed so. Yes, it is. First thing I can do is to add a blank white layer below, so the transparent areas will become white. Cool. Let me copy the original photo on top of it so we can compare. Pretty neat, the clouds and the mist are really white, which brings a very nice contrast to the image. We can move on and change the color, which can have amazing results. Like this yellow tint, gives the photo much more warmth. Before I continue, let me reset back the color to white and ask ourselves, can we achieve the same whitening effect without this method? Probably we can. Let's try by adding a brightness and contrast adjustment to the original photo and crank up the brightness to the max, so the bright areas become white. If I now apply the same blend range, we get exact same results. Things become more complicated if we're going to add a tint to it. Or apply the tint to the shadows, which can be done by adjusting the blend range of the curves layer. Or how about if we use a gradient color? I believe it can all be replicated. But using this technique, what I like to call the zero alpha blend curve, it's a piece of cake. This technique can also be used for double exposure effects. Let me add another image to the document and resize it to get a good composition. Do not forget to set the transparent layer blend mode to multiply as this gives the best result. By adding a mask, I can mask out the unwanted areas. By adjusting the blend mode of the curves layer, I can also decide how much of the layer I want to be transparent. Another effect I can do is set the blend mode to erase, which will erase all the dark areas from the image below. If I add a layer below with a solid color, we get this nice solid fill slowly blending to the other image. You can also go crazy if you want and add an image instead of a solid fill, 
creating multiple exposure effects. Another cool trick would be to adjust the mask to a gradient for a gradual transition between the images. To give more depth, I can use a gradient too for the solid layer. What I will do now is to copy the original image, move it below the composition we have created and change the blend mode of the composition group to overlay. Let me decrease the opacity and change the purple color in the gradient to black. We can enable or disable layers depending on the effect we want to achieve. Pretty cool, isn't it? You can create really interesting compositions with this technique. Let me give another example how you can use this composition. We can contain everything in a circle. So let me add a circle and move the composition group into the circle. Now the whole composition is clipped by the circle. You can fine tune the whole composition by moving the group within the circle. Change the color of the circle. Add a background and so on and so on. To wrap it up, I can even add a silhouette image. From the silhouette image, I can create a mask by using the channels and apply this mask to the group and get interesting looks by adjusting the way the silhouette layer is applied. In order to keep the video short, I'm just showing this to give you some ideas. If you're interested in the exact steps on how the final result is achieved, let me know in the comments and I will do a video on that. I hope you found this video useful and has given you some inspiration on how to use the zero alpha blend curve to get interesting results. Thanks for watching.